In this module, we'll talk about PCR technology. Now, where did, did this topic come from? We just got done talking about DNA replication. It so happens that this technology is based on principles of DNA replication. And why we are talking about it? We are talking about it because this, has, this technology has had a major impact on human health and also human society. So let's look at this. First of all, let's look at the requirements for PCR. PCR is basically a process in which you replicate a specific segment of a larger DNA molecule. So it is similar to DNA replication and its requirements are also similar to DNA replication. So what are the requirements? Number one, we need the target. We need the original DNA. We need two oligonucleotide primers. I'll show you what why and uh, what do I mean by that? We need DNA polymerase. We need that for uh, replicating DNA in, in the cell also. We need the raw material, DNTPs, the nucleotides, and we need the PCR machine. PCR machine basically is, a, is, a, is, a, is an equipment that can change the temperature of the sample or the reaction mixture. So let me explain it to you how this uh, reaction happens. I'm, I'm going to draw, draw this whole process first on the screen and then we will look at uh, a shorter version of it and then we will also look at an animation. So let me draw it on the full screen. So basically what we have is a large piece, large segment of DNA and we are interested in amplifying or replicating a specific segment. DNA as you know is double stranded. We will make the double strand. So this is the region of interest or the segment of DNA that we want to amplify. Now in order to do PCR reaction we need to know we have to have some information about the segment that we are going to amplify. I'll put down the polarities of this DNA too. Here's the 3 prime hydroxyl. This is the 5 prime end. This is the 5 prime end of this DNA molecule and here's the 3 prime end of the other strand. So the basic information we need is the sequence of the nucleotides here and the nucleotides here. So basically we make a small fragment of DNA, an oligonucleotide fragment. It is about 20 base pairs long and it, it is complementary to the bases present here. So let's say A, T, I'm actually going to do it. I need more space so I'll, I'll do it here. So the sequence of this DNA is A, T, T, G, C, C. This arbitrary sequence. So when we design the primer, we will make a complementary primer. So the complementary primer will have a sequence like this. It's a DNA primer which we use in the PCR reaction, not an RNA primer which is made by primase in the cell. So here's the primer. Again, I would point out that this is actually primers are generally 20 nucleotides long, but we are making this smaller primer just for the sake of simplicity. We'll make the same, we'll, make, we'll also make a primer, another primer, which is complementary, which has a complementary sequence to this part. So the polarities, let's also put down the polarities. The polarity would be 5 prime and 3 prime. Here it will be 5 prime and 3 prime. So the first step in PCR reaction is denaturing or just same as replicating DNA in the cell. First of all, you have to separate the two strands. So we, in PCR, we separate the two strands by heating the DNA in the reaction mixture tube. So now DNA is, the two DNA strands are, uh, are exposed. Their information is, is available to the outside molecules and in specific to the primer. This primer will, be, will specifically find this region and hybridize with this segment of DNA. It so happens that the, what is magical about the number 20, that 20 nucleotide long fragments would be unique to a DNA, specific DNA. So at random, they would not be present in more than one locations. So DNA primer will hybridize here and the other DNA primer will hybridize here. Remember our polarities, this is the 3 prime, this is the 5 prime, this is the 3 prime, and this 3 prime hydroxyl is available 
for extension. Here we have a five prime end, here we have a three prime end, and this three prime end can be extended. Now we will, this primer annealing is done at a lower temperature. Say this temperature is about 95 degrees Celsius. This temperature is generally about 55 degrees Celsius. Now we will he again heat our reaction mixture. We are heating because the enzyme in, in which we are using in our PCR mixture is, is more efficient at a higher temperature at sem, about 72 degrees centigrade. When we raise the temperature, this enzyme becomes active and it start extending this fragment in this direction and it will extend this fragment in this direction. So this is one step of PCR and which is repeated several times and this one step is basically three temperatures that we have exposed our DNA to 95, 55 and 72. About This is about the range of the temperatures. So we started with one DNA molecule, we ended up after one step, we ended up with two DNA molecules. So let's look at this in a different way. Here again it is a PCR reaction. So we have target DNA, we heat the sample, the two DNA separate, two DNA strands separate, the primers here anneal, the arrow is the three prime end. So we again raise the temperature, the DNA polymerase extends the primer and primer gets incorporated into the new DNA strand and from one DNA strand we have gone to two. We repeat this process several times and we can make billions of copies of DNA. I will show you how that is done too. We will look at the numbers too. But this is basically the PCR reaction. Again, requirements for PCR, target DNA, two oligonucleotide primers. I hope that is clear why we need the primers. DNA polymerase, the raw material which will get incorporated into the new DNA molecule and the PCR machine, which is basically a fancy machine that regulates the temperature for a very short period of time. We will continue our discussion of PCR in the next module.